moisture flow on an east and northeast wind pattern to at least give a few more spots of rain. And perhaps we'll see this same pattern again tomorrow before we notice a drying trend for our region, also influenced by the circulation of Dorian. So here's how it looks in the forecast and focus. A little more confidence, at least in showing these short-term data runs, because we are anticipating a continuation of northeast winds passing showers during the course of your Monday. Of course, Labor Day, with all this stuff going on, it's easy to forget that tomorrow's a holiday. You will still have at least a few scattered showers and perhaps a bit more, more numerous as you look towards the peninsula region of Florida. So the basics in relation to Dorian for our weather, Late Tuesday through early Thursday, if you are in our western areas, Tallahassee, Moultrie, etc., and to the west, uh, there's not going to be much of an impact. Maybe a few times of minor gusts, not very indicative and not very strong, but there could be at least a couple passing showers. But in general, western areas will stay pretty dry, while eastern areas, I think if you get anything noticeable, you'll have to be east of I-75. The Suwannee River area may have at least occasional breezes upwards of 20 miles per hour, maybe a couple stronger gusts with only one or two squalls. I do think the peak of the rain and storm activity will stay closer to the first coast region and the Atlantic shore. So not a huge enhancement in the overall risk factors for our region. We'll just continue to monitor those trends. We'll start drying out after Dorian moves to the northeast, and that will induce a hot trend as we go into the end of this week, and that's reflected in our seven day forecast numbers. Good chance that we will see near zero rain chances towards the end of the week. But our high temperatures are likely to climb into the mid and upper 90s, but at least for the short term, passing showers and near average temperatures.